Are we your only item of business this evening? Yes. Yes, yeah. you are. I'll try not to keep you too long from dinner. Okay. Um, so, Madam Chair, we are now um, live stream. Okay. Tonight, so, um, did you want me to read the agenda item? Sure. Okay. Save me one paragraph a day. Oh, okay. So, tonight, um, June 8th, we are here, Zoning and Land Use Committee members, to receive a presentation. Um, we will receive a presentation from BKSK Architects LLP to present exterior plans for the development at 6301 12th Avenue um, prior to submission of an application to the Landmarks Preservation Commission um, regarding the Angel Guardian Home at 6301 12th Avenue. Doris, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thank you very much. I am, yes, I'm not muted so I can speak. So we were here only just to discuss this proposal, the exterior plans for the development mm -hmm. at, at 6301. Um, uh, just for a little background, um, the community board and the borough president um, and the historic district council originally voted to have the entire site landmarked, but a smaller section was landmarked and that is what we are discussing now. <laughs> and um, in the landmarks preservation comments, they mentioned the some of the meritorious features of the main building, such as ornate carved limestone door surrounds, corner coins, arched windows, copper cornices, and mansard roofs. And then I would also like to add, I want to add thanks to all the people in the area who have been monitoring the site because the builder, the owner has not been a good guardian of the site. Um, and I want to thank them there. Or in April of 2021, there were comments about windows open causing damage, about the copper gutters being cut and damaged. And in 2021, um, uh, the fences had been removed and the stairs were deteriorating. At, uh, so I thank them all for their observations and their comments. And, uh, and that's my preliminary and we will go on to the presentation. Okay, well, I'll introduce myself once more. I'm John England with BKSK Architects. We're a medium-sized architecture firm in Manhattan and we've been working uh, with uh, BDF Designs, who are the architect of record for this project to help them get this uh, presentation ready for you and, and uh, for Landmark. So I, of all of the people here, I'm the Johnny come lately, and I probably know less about the history of recent history of this project uh, than, than anyone else here. And I hope that you will correct me if I uh, misspeak, but um, it's been my pleasure to work on this project with uh, BDF Designs. And uh, I will say that at least speaking personally, uh, it makes me very happy to see this formerly vacant building, which sir, was housing a, uh, a community service function uh, for a century, uh, you know, a building where, where children received spiritual and secular and moral education and guidance for a century. And uh, it makes me very happy to see that the, this building is being restored to uh, a similar function, the, the yeshiva, which itself, of course, is devoted to secular and religious, spiritual and moral guidance to, the, to uh, young, young children. So the, bu the building is, will be, once again, full of uh, young students receiving guidance from... from uh, from their, from their elders. And uh, I can give you a little background on the Gur Yeshiva. It's a school that serves a population of pre-K up, up until early teens. Uh, it's, it uh, currently serves 400, 450 students. It's a relatively new school. It's uh, only about five years old. Uh, they have a community service function and they've acquired this building in, in the anticipation that they'll be able to expand their student body to uh, maybe 600, 600 students. Um, 
So I could begin, uh, let's see, I have been able to download. So let me see if I can share my screen. Is there a share screen function here? Yes, yes there is at the bottom and I've enabled you to share. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, have I successfully shared my screen? Yes. John, John did you want me to share? No, I, I guess I've got it under control here. Should we just watch it? We'll see. <laughs> oh, it's, it's lost already. Lost already. All right, let's try. Some it. of us are all the time. Yeah. Okay, you're back. Right. Am I sharing my screen? Okay. Yes. All right. So I don't need to tell any of you where the school is. This is a location on its site uh, not so long ago. And and uh, you can see that in its original in its original uh, configuration, the the school occupied a, a campus of like an entire block, oh, wow. and and um, there was a beautiful garden here in the center, oh. and, which has now been uh, being devoted to uh, you know residential development, which which uh, puts some substantial. Um, complications on the development of this building for a school and and for the children. So this drawing here will shows you the, the current lot size is, is restricted to the front yard of the building off 12th Avenue. And the, the rear of the lot line is, is contig contiguous with the back of the building. Uh, so that that imposes some, uh, as I say, some complications as far as providing play space for the children and, and uh, finding reasonable places for uh, mechanical equipment. Uh, here are some images of the building in its former self. You can see a little bit better what the, what the campus was like uh, when the building was functioning as an orphanage. The Angel Guardian Home was founded in 1887 Eight, sorry, 1897, construction of the main building, which is, of course, this building here, was complete a couple of years later in 1899, right about the same time that Brooklyn was merged with uh, New York City. The architect uh, for the building is George H. Streeton. He was a, a, a Cornell graduate and, and uh, was recognized for the design of, of quite a number of Catholic buildings, uh, most notably Catholic churches, uh, the Cathedral Basilica of St. James in downtown Brooklyn, uh, St. Cyril and Methodius in Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan, uh, St. Joseph's Church in Greenwich Village are both, are all three of them very distinguished buildings. He was an advocate of uh, the use of terracotta for both structural and, and uh, trim, and we'll see a lot of terracotta on this building. For example, the original entrance to the building is this is all terracotta, which I've learned recently uh, for New Yorkers came mostly from Perth Amboy, New Jersey. That's where most of the decorative terracotta you see in the city uh, was made. The, um, the building was added to several times. In 1910, uh, the chapel was built on the, on the uh, 64th Street side and the first story of a school building over here on the 63rd Street side. And, and also the, an entry portico, which we'll see a little bit later, was tacked onto the front of the building. And in 1917, uh, some additional stories were added to the, to the school. And it functioned, as you, we all know, as an orphanage until about uh, 1980. And I understand it, it uh, served as a senior center for a short time thereafter. Uh, the building has survived in uh, very good condition. Um, these are views of the primary facades, front of the building, and the and and the and the sides. It's um, it's obviously a brick building with and all of, most of the light colored stuff you see is is a uh, terracotta, which is essentially pottery with a glaze on it. And uh, it's really has no significant. Uh, deterioration aside from you know small scale things which need to be fixed uh, on the primary side and the back of the building the back of the building was you know has had uh, additions removed and there were some fire escapes on the back of it and so and and openings 
to the fire escape. So, uh, so it's a little bit more scarred and, and uh, requiring uh, some more attention to bring it up, bring it up to up to speed. But the um, I should say that there there have been some changes to the building over time, uh, some of which are um, the, a new fiberglass cornice at, at the roof, uh, replacement of uh, many of the roofs with asphalt shingles, um, replacement of the windows, of course, with the, the aluminum, the original wood windows, and uh, the installation of a guard at the roof to keep people from falling off the roof when they're, you know, when they're working up at the top of the building. So here are some views of the roof. Uh, there's some, what I believe to be original slate surviving on the school building. The other two buildings roofs have been replaced with asphalt. And uh, then up at the top of the mansard, you can see the, the existing guard, which will be replaced. But these roofs will all stay in place and only be repaired as necessary as they're in, in reasonable condition. Although you can obviously see that the roof on this little dormer is gone. So the anticipated site plan for the building is something like this. And as I was saying, the, the back of the building is the back of the property line. So this is all of the territory that the school has, has to operate with. So the, the hope is to devote the front yard, which is largely flat and mostly screened from the street by the by the hedge behind the fence into the playground for the children. Uh, and then a number of new entrances are to be established in order to serve the various functions of the building, which we can, uh, we can go into. Um, as I say, the restrictions on the site, where we have only this territory for the play yard for the children and to find places for Mechanical has also been a little bit difficult. We're proposing to put mechanicals in the backyard where they'll be uh, least offensive, but the goal is to bring the building up to uh, modern standards for heating and air conditioning and, and, uh, and efficiency. We're also putting some mechanical uh, in, in the little spaces between the buildings and toward the back where they won't be visible from the street. So the program, of course, is a, as, as a school building on the bottom floor, the basement, there's a large uh, gathering room, a, a public assembly space, uh, which is of a size that requires uh, specific types of uh, egress for safety. And so the school is proposing to, to make two new entrances in the, in the spaces between the, the main building and the, and the, and the school and the, and the chapel and reconfigure uh, some of the existing openings uh, to provide uh, the appropriate and code required uh, handicap appliance, uh, sorry, uh, accessibility. The dark blue spaces are spaces where there's most particular uh, construction. There's some little mechanical space being added in this spot in between the two buildings. And this is where the bulk of the mechanical equipment, outdoor mechanical equipment is going. And then the other thing uh, worthy of note is an elevator shaft, which is going to go right here. And we'll talk, look, look at them a little more closely in just a minute. But uh, so if we look at the, these are elevations of the existing condition of the building at the top and the proposed condition at the bottom. And the work that is, uh, is being proposed is, is essentially cleaning and repairing the masonry on the outside of the building, uh, replacing the windows so to, uh, and um, replacing the guard, stepping the guard back from the edge of the roof a little bit to make it a little bit less visible, but uh, leaving the guard in place to ensure people's safety when they're working up on the roof. And then here you can see some of the mechanical equipment. It's important to remember uh, when looking at an elevation that that's a straight on view and it's not the same as the view from the street, which is foreshortened. And you'll see later in the renderings that the actual view from the street is a little different than this one. But uh, the, the masonry will be cut and pointed and there are, there are some signs that are being proposed to uh, announce the existence of the school. 
and of course uh, the removal of uh, Christian iconography, which would not be appropriate for a yeshiva, which are which is a, essentially uh, crosses on the tops of the um, cupolas, and a cross which I understand fell off the uh, terracotta entrance, and uh, we'll talk about uh, the windows in the chapel as well. And then there are a few elements on the on the uh, gate at, and the yard that will need to be removed. So sorry, I'm just going backwards here. So there was the elevations. And then we have a photograph of the existing building and uh, a, a rendering more or less of what it would look like. And you can see that it's not really changed very much in appearance. The windows are being restored back to something close to their original configuration, whereas Currently, we have these black opaque panels at the tops of the windows. And, um, and some signs are being are, are proposed for the for the front of the, or the front of the building, which we can look at a little bit more closely. But overall, overall, there's very little change being proposed for the front of the building here. You can see the new the new uh, guardrail of the roof, which is stepped back a little bit and makes it a little bit less visible than the one that's on there at present. And the side elevations, it's more or less the same story. The, the black opaque panels over the, over the windows are going to be replaced with uh, clear glass transom lights and the windows restored to uh, something resembling the original configuration. On this side on 63rd Street, we're proposing to cut an opening in the existing granite wall and convert one window into a door so that we can, we can provide a wheelchair ramp that comes up to the basement level, providing access to the inside of the building. And then that ramp will continue up to the front yard so that there is wheelchair access to the play area in the front of the building. And that, that second ramp is behind and invisible behind the existing granite retaining wall. And then here you, be, you can begin to see where the mechanical equipment is going to go in the backyard. So the side elevation, we have the existing photograph and the proposed uh, ramp into, into the front of the build, into the side of the building with the, uh, with the new door cut into the, into the existing window opening, but otherwise, you know, no significant changes on the outside of the building aside from the sign and the door and the ramp out in the sidewalk. The other side of the building, the 64th Street side, we already have an entrance on that side, but there's a step up into the building, which will need to be removed. But otherwise it's, you know, it's the same story as uh, we had on the front and the other side, there's a, there's a sign being proposed on the side of the building, windows replaced, masonry repaired, uh, new guard on the roof. And here you can see uh, elevator bulkhead sticking up in the corner of the building, which we'll look at a little more closely. So this is the chapel side of the building. And the, this is the entrance, this is the same, same location. It, all we're doing is taking a step out of it so that you can wheel directly into the building, which we'll show you a little bit more closely. Now details, details of the building, we have a, the entrance, entrance gate not coming up on my screen, there it is. It's thought to be a little bit narrow. I mean, whereas in its previous incarnation as an orphanage, there wasn't such a large amount of traffic in and out of the building. Whereas uh, now as a school with hundreds of children coming in and out, the thought, the thought was that this entrance was a little bit narrow. So we're proposing to take these two posts and move them apart and put a new gate in, which mimics the existing gate which could be a little bit wider and would swing open against the, the fence. And it was supplemented by uh, a signs on either side on the, on the piers that will um, commemorate the existent, existence of the school and I think recognize uh, donors. So here we see we see a, a rendering of a new gate 
And um, we're also proposing to remove the uh, existing steps, which don't appear to be of the same age as the building, uh, which were in ruinous condition, as we all, as you all know, uh, with some more gentle steps to make it a little bit easier for students to come in and out. But I, we don't expect that this will, you know, materially affect the view of the building from the street. And we have a section of the steps and 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 a plan of the, but the walk and the hedge and the retaining wall and the and the fence are all expected to re, to remain in place. A few changes are being proposed for the main entrance of the building. We found an old photograph here, which maybe you can see if I zoom in a little bit. Uh, whereas currently there is a single door with side lights. Originally there was a double door on the entrance of this building, the, the, um, the portico, which was added in 1910. And so the existing portico looks like this with a single door and two side lights. And it is uh, pretty badly corroded and uh, in need of repair. So we're proposing to replace it with a pair of doors with a security grill and other changes uh, that are proposed are pin mounted uh, lettering with school name and also uh, to cover the um, Christian iconography here in the center with a, with a, with a sign with the school logo, uh, not to remove it, but just to cover it up and leave it in place. Uh, and of course, some, some lighting at the entrance, the lighting is required by code and uh, we'll be removing We'll be removing some of the existing um, lighting and conduit and so forth at the front of the building, which currently disfigures the front of the building. So here's a photograph of the front of the building. And you can see that this, this entrance appears to be brass coated steel and it's uh, rusted and corroded and not in very good shape. We're, going, we're proposing to replace it. And I should have said that the other one thing, the small change we want to make here is to take the crosses out of the uh, these round lights in the transom and replace them with similar um, obscure glass. Currently, this is ribbed obscure glass and we would replace it with similar, but without the, without the crosses in the windows. So, but it will, you know, it'll look materially the same. And I, I should say that uh, you could see in this photograph that a lot of this terracotta and even some of the brick like these brick courses right here uh, have been painted and when the building is cleaned we'll have a little better idea of what the original terracotta color was the, I mean the color in this rendering is much too bright and too white but we don't at this moment know exactly what the color of the terracotta will be so when the building is cleaned we'll have a little better idea of uh, of of uh, the target color for uh, for the for the ent for the entrance. I, oh, one other thing I forgot to mention is that the, currently there's a very small step outside the door, which is a little dangerous for the students, and so the plan is to remove this step and make for a larger landing in front of the door, so that when students come out of the door, they don't just cascade down the stairs. That there's a enough room for them to maneuver around the door and find their way uh, down, to the, down to the path. And now detailed drawings, these are a little bit tough to, to read. What are, we're talking about here is an entrance that's, that's proposed for the space in between the chapel and the main building. Currently, you come in from 12th Street over here, you come in on grade and you come down a flight of stairs to a door. The, the new basement plan is going to take this, take this relatively new construction that's back here and move it forward and, and cut a new door into the, into the public space inside, uh, which will require reconfigure, reconfiguration of the steps. But I don't believe that much, of, much if anything of this will be visible from the street. Uh, in plan, it looks like this, where currently you come in from from 12th Avenue, this is the main building here on this side and the, and the uh, chapel on the other. Come in, you come down the steps and through this door, we're proposing to make this a little bit shorter. And then this double door here is like the main entrance into the, into the main building.
sorry, into the chapel basement. And, and the changes are to take this, take what was formerly a door and a relatively new piece of construction. This is a new wall with a, with a new door and a transom light that's with the glaze to let some light in. But all of that, you can see this is the level of the grade here. And so when, by the time you're on the street, it's really not going to be particularly visible. And uh, this is more or less how it will look if you're close up. This is the existing view and the, pro and the proposed view. And then the double door is back, back here. This is the main building on the left and the, and the chapel on the right. And then similarly, on the opposite side, over here between the school building and the main building, another entrance. Currently, you come in off 12th Avenue and you're on grade and you encounter a window. What we're proposing to do is to leave that lintel in place and cut a door opening in here so we could step down to the basement. Uh, so from the street, it will not, I mean, from the grade here, it will not look very much different. Um, in plan, we have an existing gate which will need to be removed and then the new door and transom light you know, down, down low. So existing, you come in, you're on grade and you come in here, here. The proposed plan is to add some steps to get down to the basement and then into the building. This will provide the necessary egress from the public assembly space, which obviously when you have a lot of people in an interior space, they need to be able to get out quickly in the event of an emergency. On the 63rd Street side, which is uh, over here next to the school, currently there's, there's a retaining wall and, and you saw earlier our proposed a proposal for a ramp, a ramp which would begin uh, on the 12th Avenue side and step up to the basement level and then continue behind the retaining wall up to the front yard. So here, here's the ramp coming up to the landing and, and then into the building. And then the ramp continues up behind the retaining wall and then up to the yard so that students have wheelchair access to the, to the play area. And this will require excavation of this area, uh, construction of a new granite retaining wall to match the existing and the addition of a security gate on, on, the, uh, on the ramp side of the, of the entrance. And that will, in rendering, will look more or less like this. Or here's the ramp coming up. These are the steps on the other side into the door and then the ramp behind the retaining wall up to the yard. And as before, you can see the windows are being replaced and, and restored more or less to their original configuration. This is the existing condition. We're going, we want to keep this gate. This gate functions nicely and then it has like offset hinges so that when it opens, it opens flat up against the wall and so students can move in and out. This step and this step, we want to remove this step so that you'll be able to wheel into the building in your wheelchair. So the new, new entrance with the gate will be slightly lower. Uh, and I should add that this cross on the top of the gate will be removed. And uh, a, new, uh, a new door with a code required width and a, and a fixed sidelight on the, on the side of it. We're expecting to retain this existing uh, decorative metalwork and put it into the new opening. This will all be a metal frame, but more or less matching the uh, dimensions of the existing, uh, the existing door. Behind this, behind this gate. And so, sorry, the photograph of the existing condition is a little cluttered up with material, but you can see that there's no real significant change in that we still, we have the same break in the wall. It's just a, you know, a few inches lower than the new door with side lights and a transom and a, a sign overhead. Now the rear of the building is going to receive a little bit more substantial change. Uh, I'll just point out that we're, we're filling in this area here to provide some room for mechanical equipment. Uh, 
This is the new elevator serving the entire building to provide wheelchair access to all floors of the building. And then this is an existing extension, which will house the kitchen serving the assembly space uh, at the basement level. And we're proposing to put uh, air conditioning equipment on the roof of, of, the, of this uh, extension. But the other option that we, we had really was to put it on top of the main building where it would have been quite visible from view. So we thought we were hoping that this was, is an acceptable uh, alternative to you. The elevator uh, will serve, as I say, all floors of the building, which will require it to come up a little bit above the uh, height of, of, the, of the guardrail. We're proposing to clad the elevator in a light gray sheet metal that will blend with the other grays and, and dark objects up on the roof. Um, and uh, I have some views here to show you. Um, this is probably the most visible view from um, 63rd Street down the hill. But uh, from the front of the front side of the building, uh, it's not very much in evidence. And of course, from a 64th Street side, you don't see it. This, this will also shows you what the mechanical equipment that we're proposing to put on the, on the top of the kitchen extension. And we can look at some window details and then I'm, I'm done with my presentation. Uh, just to remind you, uh, this is a photograph taken by New York City in 1940. One of the interesting things about working in New York is that uh, in 1939, 1940, New York City photographed every single building in the city. Yeah. And, and you, can, uh, you can obtain these photographs from the city. This is one of, one of these photographs. Uh, usually there's a guy with a nice looking hat on and, in these pictures that often the photograph is focused on the sign rather than the building, which is endlessly frustrating because when you get in close to the building, it's a little bit hard to make out uh, what's visible, but you can see uh, these mysterious features, which are now gone. I They may have been windows. They might've been some kind of ventilation device. I don't know really what they were. Uh, the windows on the top floor are in round-headed openings. The windows on the second floor have a clear transom with double hung windows below. Likewise, on the first floor, we have a clear transom with double hung windows below. And then the chapel, of course, has stained glass windows on here and then the more typical windows on the level below. So we're fortunate to discover that underneath the replacement aluminum windows, uh, some portions of the original wood windows have survived. Wow. So uh, we have measured, measured the profiles, which you can see here. This is, my, this is our conjecture of what the original window of the basement window looked like, but we, this molding profile still exists and uh, the, the uh, windowsill still exists, and of course, the brick mold on the side. Uh, they're all, of course, are pretty tired. Uh, the school has hired a materials conservationist to do uh, paint color analysis of the of the paint on the grills and on the windows, uh, and we expect to have her report shortly. Uh, and so we'll be able to um, duplicate or come close to the original color of the windows in our replacement windows, which are proposed to be aluminum windows. And as you can see from these two drawings, we are able to come very close to the existing sight lines with these, uh, this type of window, which has a, an aluminum, uh, what's called aluminum panning, which can wrap around the existing wood window, leave the existing wood window in place. And, and it, it pretty closely mimics the, the um, the profile of the existing uh, wood brick molds. Um, I think I, I feel pretty happy about how that's going to look. So in the elevation, there are the basement windows. The, we're maintaining more or less the, uh, the original sight lines without affecting them a great deal. And as I say, we're going to do our best to match the colors. 
and we have a, a num number of window types. So we have the round head windows up at the top. And again, they're not going to look too much different than, than previously. And then finally, which I don't see here on this presentation, uh, which I'll have to describe to you is our, our proposal for the stained glass windows in the church, in the chapel. Um, the, the yeshiva has, is speaking to uh, Rambush, which is a well-known stained glass studio, uh, working with them to have these stained glass windows removed carefully and uh, with any luck uh, provided a new home and uh, we will be replacing the, the windows with uh, clear or obscure glass with a, with a pattern on the window that, that recalls the, the general composition of, of the stained glass windows without of course reproducing the, the Christian iconography. And that is uh, a summary of the work that, uh, that we're proposing for the building. And uh, uh, I think you'll agree that the work is a real, all relatively small scale and uh, doesn't materially affect the, the appearance of the building from, from the street. And I hope that you'll find our proposal acceptable. Thank you very much. I have two questions. Because I review your presentation, and I will say I will say um, it's it's on probably pages twenty one and twenty two. Because um, one of the things that East Landmarks Preservation Commission said was the meritorious features were the ornate carved limestone door surrounds, and on that page you seem to be removing some of that detail. Uh, yes, that's, a, that's an error in the, in the rendering. We're, we're not proposing to change uh, any, of the, any of the stonework around the entrance, uh, but no. only to replace the metal infill but, within. But, but, but what your picture shows, it's not, it's not the, it's not something, it's above it, it's the cornices, uh, the, the, uh, the cornices above it. You seem to be removing some of the detail there. Or is that uh, just it, the rendering? It's just it's just the rendering. You know, it's uh, asking a lot to ask a renderer to replace okay. to reproduce every single little detail. But the only change we're proposing to make to the uh, what I believe is terracotta uh, entrance here is is to clean it and and make it watertight and to put a, a new school logo over the the uh, Christian iconography that's over the door. Okay, and 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 you know, I'm 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 sorry, but I I you don't have to do it now. But could you explain what the Christian iconography who is is over the door? Because it does not. Well, maybe we can zoom in on. Uh, see, oh, there's a, oh, okay. See? I take it back. I when I wasn't close, I couldn't have seen the cross. Yeah. Take it back. And of course, these these uh, cameras and lights will go away, and the and you know all of this uh, conduit and other other nonsense. And there are several areas where are you, you are removing gates. It's in the gate were part of it, but um, is there any reason you're just leaving them open? Uh, the gates are, uh, the places where we're removing gates are, uh, let's see, let's go to the, maybe to the plan. So there's there's a gate here, and and another one over here, and unfortunately when they're open, they kind of stick out into the yard, and and they they the existing downspouts interfere with them so that they don't open very completely. Um, and aside from that, we want to make the these new uh, entrances and exits from the building as welcoming as possible, and so. We're proposing to remove the gates, and if and they can be stored, and and not disposed of, in the event somebody should want to want to return them to the, their current position. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to open the discussion to any committee members. 
Okay, Dara, so we have um, any committee members with questions? You can please use the hand raise function. Okay, I, I don't see any, but we have Kelly Carroll who- That was, uh, that was next. Yes, Kelly uh, is a Bay Ridge resident and was very active on this application and worked with the board and we're happy she's here tonight. Um, so Kelly. Thank you, Josephine. And um, thank you, um, Mr. Englund for your, your um, very well drawn and thorough presentation. Um, I'm also, um, I'm a preservation consultant. Um, I was very curious about, um, there is signage on every public facade of this building, correct? Yes. Okay. Is um, I was curious about the need for it to be on every single elevation of the building. I Well, I think the desire is for the school to make its students feel welcome and and announce itself to to the neighborhood okay um i just i noticed that it was it's all proposed to be pin mounted and given the the nature of these individual characters being um attached to the building i do worry about the degradation of the masonry um there is a you know, this, this building sits um, so far back from the street that um, I was wondering if possibly um, a sign that you could put in the front yard um, could be a better solution than poking holes in this building. Um, there is a uh, PS 187 is a short walk up, the, up um, uh -huh. 12th Avenue. They have, they have a sign like that. Um, also, um, Visitation Academy in Bay Ridge is a similar campus-like um, school and there's no signage on that building at all. Um, similarly, Adelphi Academy in Bay Ridge, which was funny enough, a school which was formerly an orphanage, um, they have dealt with signing by attaching the signage itself to um, the fencing or mm -hmm. used, um, other non-intrusive methods. So those might be some local examples. Um, I also had a question about your um, the, the choice to obscure the iconography um, above the fan light, um, but your choice to also remove the cross from the roof of the chapel. So is it possible to also obscure that ornament um, a, as opposed to its removal? Well, currently they're, they're uh, inside boxes that are sitting on the top of the, of the um, of the dormers. Okay. And I suppose those boxes could stay up there. Um, specifically, isn't there isn't there a crucifix atop the 64th Street Chapel that's that's not a dormer cross? It's a more prominent cross. Uh, I don't think I have a photograph of it, but okay. it maybe so. Um, just because I I have a feeling that it might be terracotta and the cross that um, is no longer with us was also terracotta so that it might be um nice be difficult to, to remove yeah 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 um and then i also was um wondering about um the stained glass i i totally understand that i'm this building has a new life um and is no longer going to be associated with the catholic faith um but uh, not too long ago, I worked um, on First Church of Christ Scientists in the Upper West Side, and instead of a wholesale removal of the stained glass, art glass on that building, um, the non-iconographic parts of the windows were left in situ, and I was wondering if that's something you all had considered. Uh, it is something we've talked about. I, I don't think that the existing steel windows are very weather tight, and I don't know whether they, they could be made to be, um, you know, reasonably efficient from a thermal standpoint. But of course, the school is watching its budget and, you know, needs to spend its money where it gets the most, from which it gets the most benefit. Okay. Um, thank you. And then um, the um, 
is the the current railing the um the gate the fence that's around the property is that going to be all all of it completely removed no that's all going to stay and just okay. be scraped scraped down and repainted awesome okay um and then i guess my last my last question was um what are the uh, what is the proposed material of the primary um, entrance of the doors? Aluminum. Aluminum. Okay. Um, and then this is just me. I um I must have missed the Hebrew lesson that day. What does the <laughs> <laughs> what does the um the signage actually say? Uh, I'm afraid I don't have the language skills to tell you answer okay. that question. Okay. Um. That those are those are my um. Those are my comments. Um, so thank, thank you very much. I know I had a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much for, your, for all the detail on that. Um, Barbara, your hand, Barbara Jermack, your hand was up next. Barbara, you have to unmute. Okay, just wondering about the uh, children in the school. Is this a primary school, a secondary school? Is it for boys, girls, co-ed? It's for boys only oh. from, from pre-K up to early teens, say seventh or eighth grade. And how many youngsters will be enrolled? Currently the school uh, serves a population of about 400 and uh, moving into this building, they can increase their uh, School, school age population to 600 or, or, or a little more. And what about school buses? Will they be stationed permanently outside the school? I, 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 that's not a question I'm afraid I can answer as an architect. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay, thank you. I would like to follow up on Barbara's question because I thought when I looked at the plans, I thought there was a boys and girls entrance. Right, me too, and that's what I noticed. There's a men's and a women's entrance. So when the when the assembly space and the bottom of the building is serving adults, there needs to be a, a separate entrance for each gender. So the school will be serving boys only. Yes. Um, and there except when there's a community event. For community events. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Anne. Uh, John, I wanted to ask you about the portions of new railing, which are very um, trim and spare and <clears throat> look very aluminum. That on the roof. Being, on the roof. Uh, on the roof and also at the main entrance, um, at the sides of the new stoop, if you will. The, the, well, the railing that were the guards that were proposing on, let's say the 63rd street side. No, I just mean the front entrance. The, the 12th Avenue main entrance stoop. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, there, currently there's no railing there. Right. And so we're, we're proposing, we were suggesting just a very uh, simple, handrail like this one here because there's quite a lot there's quite a lot going on right here and i oh was, i i agree but the yeah. the uh rendering shows a railing Ren with with, with aluminum looking back there we go yeah please uh never mind about that okay great a, we're not going to put the railing in that stone okay it's going to it's going to sit in the new steps over in the, okay that's great and yeah. on the on the roof how far above the roof proper? How high above the roof proper? It's it, the railing is sitting on the slope of the roof. Yes? Yeah, it it needs to be three and a half feet high mm -hmm. to keep people from falling off the roof. Mm -hmm. And what will that look railing look like? It will look not so dissimilar from what the the railing that's up there now. That thought is to keep it simple and fairly transparent. I don't have a good, uh, we need to provide you with a detail of that. I'm not sure I have a good image of that. Okay. So it's, you know, it's very, it's, the thought is to make it not compete with the building, but to have it but be more or less, thought, as, just a thought. You know, more or less transparent like the one that's there now. Yes. 
John, just a thought, is it possible to move the top rail a little lower so that it gets a little, a little even more transparent? Because sure. Yeah. 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 So that the, the pickets come up through the top yeah, rail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and then one other just general interest question, the pale blue on your plans, was that existing layout to remain as is? Uh, let's see. Was towards the beginning. Yeah, this one here. Yes, is the pale blue existing to remain? Yes. Yeah, okay. and the dark the dark blue is Okay, great. new construction except of course this is just mechanical equipment on top of existing. Okay. And one one more question a little off topic and that is to say a little off site and that is what has happened or will happen to the brick matching brick building behind on 63rd Street. Perhaps it's already gone. I don't know. I wish I knew. That's a beautiful building. It is a beautiful building. In fact, yeah. when we looked at this for land, for in the original subdivision of the property, our committee and the community board in general were advocating for that to be part of this parcel or part of this salvage of the of building. Yeah, I'm curious as to how how that division occurred. But. Yes. Um, does anyone else know on your team? I don't think so. Okay. I think that Thank happened you. before, before the building was changed ownership. Okay. Thank you, John. Any more? Stephanie. Yes, um, can you, I'm curious, can you please tell me if all of these changes to include the window cutouts that accommodate new doorways, are they mm -hmm. all within the landmarking preservation strictures? Yeah, yeah, I mean, our next step after you make your recommendation to landmarks is to make this same presentation to the Landmarks Commission and let them tell us if what we're doing is uh, acceptable to them. But we're, you know, we're more or less mimicking the general configuration of the, uh, what we believe the original windows and, and it's hard to know what the original side doors look like. We do have this grainy photograph of the double doors at the front of the, of the portico, but we have no evidence for what the side doors look like. So they're looking you know, they're looking more or less like the same proportions as a glazed wood door, but we're making them of aluminum to be a little more durable for the traffic that has to go through. Okay, thank you. Any more board members? Yes, you can. One, one more question. Um, John, we saw the lanterns at the front entrance. Mm -hmm. What other site lighting will there be and um, that is also subject to landmark acceptance, yes. correct? The side lighting needs to be developed. Uh, but we are, we're proposing to put a pair of lights at, at each entrance. That's, that's a code requirement as well as uh, a desire. Uh, and certainly we're gonna need to put some lighting back in these entrances and there will need to be some lighting out here in the yard, but the yard is, really not very fully developed yet. And, and that there will undoubtedly be some, some lighting along, along the walks here so that when you're leaving the building at night that it's, you know, it's reasonably well lit and you feel safe. Right, but would it be land post style in keeping with the building or floodlights? Hopefully not. Uh, I, my, it's not decided yet really, but my inclination would be to put of as minimal, relatively modern, but very minimal in size and visual impact uh, lighting, lighting on poles, not very tall on, on site, but that's something that we have to, we have to develop with the ownership. Thank you. Thank you, that was a very thorough. Uh, presentation and uh, you cover a lot of data. Um, obviously there is, there is respect, there appears to be respect for the structure at done. 
And um, we have a lot more questions and I'm going to ask for Josephine's help in here. Yeah. And we're only discussing design and LPC impacts. We will be discussing further how kids get there, how they get dropped off at the uh, Oh, right, another time. Um, John, I just wanted to ask you about the the landscaping and the greenery, um, which is so, um, you know, which has really complemented this building in so many ways. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the preservation of the um, landscaping? Well, you know, I mean, you can see from the site plan that the 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 school need is to create a a, a recreational area for the students to run around in outside and that's plainly not going to be grass or it'll be pounded into dirt in no time uh, but the expectation is to maintain the hedge around the perimeter of the building which uh, you know really screens your view of most of the yard uh, some trees can be retained uh, but mm, the ones in the center are going to have to move in order to make, you know, make room for the for the for the kids. But the the as I say, the front yard and the landscape design is still a little uh, a little raw. Right. Um, I think that's important. So you you're not aware of the materials then that would be used for the playground. I mean, we have many playgrounds and in, in the community board that do have, you know. Um, the ability to have useful play as well as um, using uh, materials that um, complement the um, surrounding landscaping. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's worth just re reiterating that the, the, the level of the front yard is significantly above that of the street. And aside from the hedge and the tops of the trees that you can see from the sidewalk, I don't think that the front yard is very visible from a public way. Okay. But, but I, I would add on an environmental issue, would it be possible to increase the depth of the hedgerows so that we have more hedges and they are evergreens and remove um, um, carbon dioxide uh, all year round, not just in the summer? I don't know whether the school is uh, ready to volunteer to give up that space. I, I can say that- I'm not that asking the, for a lot. I'm asking for maybe, <laughs> may, maybe uh, two feet. Uh, uh -huh. I, uh, I can say that the play surface is expected to be permeable so that it, it will not increase the amount of uh, stormwater runoff generated by the site. Okay, um, so Doris, you wanna to move to public questions? Yes, yeah, so, uh, Josephine, I'm going to ask you to monitor this for me because you know the players. And I love you. Okay, so oh, actually, we have a board member on that has a, a, a hand okay. right um, here. Leodin Castillo, I did not see you earlier. So I will, um, you can ask a question, Leodin. A new board member. Um, you have to unmute. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, thanks for the presentation, John. Um, and uh, yes, I agree with the rest of the panelists. Everything has been very thorough. Uh, I just have a quick question pertaining to the back of the, of the structure where you're placing uh, the new mechanical equipment. Um, and even though it's not gonna be seen from the public way, uh, I'm curious about the impact whether uh, in terms of visibility or sound from uh, any adjacent property? Uh, I should say that it will be visible from, from 64th Street. If you if you were like standing here and looking through this space, you would okay. see it a, a bit. I mean, let's see if I can just find that view quickly without keeping you too long. Is, are you proposing any kind of mechanical screen uh, and to make sure that the, uh, what, what do you, what do you have in up there? Uh, uh, condenser units of yeah, uh, yeah, they're certain condensers. size. And they're condensers mm -hmm. and the modern condensers are not so noisy. It's taking a while for this image to load. Uh, but there, there will be a screen around them. 
Um, am I, no, for some reason this is not loading. There we go. Are we talking, what, in terms of material and uh, are you guys keeping up with the, what is the material of that? And, uh, and is there a way to, if it's visible from the extreme, to make sure that you incorporate some kind of a logic that, that also respects the character of existing building? This is, the, this is the mechanical area that we're talking about here. And you, as you can see, though, though this camera is a little bit taller than a human being. Uh, this is a view that you will have from 64th Street. And the thought is to just keep it as re recessive as possible. Uh, I mean, the mechanical equipment has to have uh, substantial airflow around it. So it's not really possible to put let's say brick walls around it, or it, it won't function properly. So it has to have um, a, a perforated screen around it. And that, that could be elaborated in any number of different ways, of course. But. I understand. Uh, well, my, my, uh, my take would be to, uh, to have your team look into uh, whether it's a pattern, the perf, or perhaps layering, uh, some metal work in front of it that uh, uh, there seems to be a lot of emphasis on the metal work, obviously, that you get to see from the ground um, mm -hmm. up front. But it'd be interesting to, uh, to make sure that we're not neglecting, uh, you know, I'm an architect as well. And, and that's something that I tend to pay attention a lot, the, uh, to make sure that the mechanical equipment gets, uh, gets a form of treatment that, uh, that it's not just a back of house. Uh -huh. um, so that it that it also conforms to the uh, to the overall character um, of the project. Uh, it's also uh, possible to argue that the mechanical equipment is a modern, a recent addition to the building, and it should be obvious that it is not a part of the uh, early twentieth century construction that we're looking at. But. You can argue that question forever if you wish. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we're going to move to Claudia Sharipa. Um, Claudia, you can unmute yourself. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for the presentation. I do have a couple of statements, questions. Um, one of them is that I've, you know, I've been seeing this project, it was an ongoing project, and I've been seeing this building ch being chipped away, chipped away, and it's a nightmare, I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen people from the um, landmarking coming in to see what actually is going on. The community sees it every single Sorry, day. I lost, you, I lost you for about three minutes. I've been talking three minutes, but <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. So I've been seeing this building being chipped away, slowly but surely it's been, been chipped away. Now, for me, the cross hasn't just fell fall off. It's a hundred year old building. It's been a, in a, a great building and all of a sudden the cross falls off. I don't believe it. I'll be honest with you. I don't believe it. The stairs were ruined. Somebody intentionally did that and nobody's investigating it. This building has been landmarked and it is, it is being changed left and right. Oh, there's a problem with this. And all of a sudden it's cracked. The windows are open. It, it, to me, it's been an insane journey. Me watching from the outside, how this, be, this building is being destroyed. As far as that, that I saw of you're saying the mechanical stuff, why can't you put shrubbery there? There could be something there because this is a community. This is not, um, um, this house is surrounding this. So uh, us people as a community of the residents there, they're so, it's so chaotic that what's going on. And everybody's just saying, oh yeah, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that. We're, we're seeing, we're actually living there, seeing, seeing the traffic, the noise. So how is that gonna take place? I don't think you can answer that at this moment, but I think it's something that needs to really be addressed and really looked onto because nobody is, is, is bringing it to the forefront, no one. Well, as I said at the beginning, I'm a relatively recent arrival on this project and I don't know much about the uh, history over the last couple of years, but I can only say that my conversations with, our, with a client are, have indicated that they're very pleased and proud to be in this building. They're very happy to be in this building. Uh, they're not a real estate developer who are like a residential real estate developer to come in and make the 
changes and then sell it and get out. These people are going to be here for a long time and they have every interest in maintaining the building and taking care of it and making whatever investments are necessary for its long-term uh, its long-term survival. And of course they want to be a good neighbor. Absolutely. And, and I agree with that as far as, and, and so we need that, we need that, that communication open and has it not been open. It has not, we don't even know who the owners are. We can't even get a hold of the owners and this has been ongoing. So I would like them to come forward. We would, should have a meeting about this because it's important. This is a community. This is, there's a lot of residents involved. I agree with you completely. And I hope that there's a way that uh, such meetings could be established. And <clears throat> Thank you, Jesse. Do we have a round? Yes. Um, let's see. I don't see any other hands raised um, from the public. So um, maybe John, I'll ask you then to stop your screen share. Uh, so. All right. Oh, wait, wait. I see two participants. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I do have one more. Um, Pauline. Pauline, you should be able to unmute. What are the hours of the school and how many days will they be in the school? I have never asked my client that question. Okay, I, I have another thing. They're gonna be closed on a Saturday, I'm sure. Uh, Saturday no is their Sabbath. Our yeah. Sabbath is on a Sunday. They're gonna be open on a Sunday. We like, we like quiet in the neighborhood. We don't like all this friction, buses, <laughs> traffic. We don't like that. It was yeah, yeah, so some communication needs to be open between the yeah, I, I think school and the, and the community to, you know, to work out these sort of logistical questions. Right. Certainly, um, you know, I know there's a number of, of members of the public who would like to have a meeting about, you know, day to day operations. I know tonight's focus is on the architectural submission to LPC on changes um, to the structure that the board has an opportunity to comment. And I, you know, I, I believe we can get that contact information, John, um, on the ownership that will be part of this submission and we can reach out at a later date to have a meeting with the, the public. Yes, I hope maybe you could help us to get the conversation going. Great. And I want to reinforce Josephine's comments. That, um, and tonight's meeting is about the submission to LPC and um, the concerns about a new school here will be addressed at another time. And they will be addressed. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so I just. Um, Doris, I think that's it. Maybe John, if you um, if you want to stop the screen share. Okay. Uh, we could resume so we could see everyone. Here we go. Is that better? Yes. Um, okay, so, um, so board members, we actually have to vote. Um, do we support the applicant's submission to the exterior plans for the development at 6301 12th Avenue, the Angel Guardian site? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Anne. Anne has her hand raised. Uh, I think it's. A, I think it was a really responsible and conscientious presentation, and that their intentions seem to me to be largely in line with um, the viewpoints of the Landmarks Commission. But I think maybe we want to to enumerate. <clears throat> some of the uh, particulars that we hoped that they might relook at um, as part of our response. I agree. Okay. So, so Kelly had mentioned the signage um, specifically, and I thought that was a good um, point in mm -hmm. preserving and some of the examples that she raised in the community um, so that the signage doesn't permeate the building. Um, if it could be done in a different way, um, some of the retention of the stained glass windows um, in, in some way. Um. Yes, I, th I think as Kelly said, that it should be a, a tasteful freestanding 
you know, not huge sign um, rather than affixing anything to the building. Would that be what you're thinking, Kelly? I, I that was her thinking, and that's exactly what I just wrote down. Great. So I have I have her I have three of her references, which we will take a look at. Steve. <clears throat> Steve, is your mute? Yes. And yeah. What's the problem? <laughs> your hand is up. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, I have no idea that my hand is up. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> so fine. I do not. I, I, as long as I'm on, though, I just want to say <laughs> that I'm hearing a lot of things about the iconography. And uh, I, uh, you know, I believe that, you know, if Macy's bought gimbals, they would probably change the signs. So I don't think there's any problems there. <laughs> One more thing, could, yes. we, could we also um, note the uh, redesign of the railing at the roof? Granted that 42 inches is the law, but just to lower the horizontal <clears throat> so that we, it appears to be a little bit smaller, shorter. Okay, that can be a recommendation. And you all, I know I'm not a member of the committee, but as you all know, I have been, um, landscaping is very important to me as well. And I think that making sure that as much of the landscaping features of the, um, of the campus can, that can be preserved should be preserved. Um, I don't know if that's something you'd like to consider, but. Um, I, I will, I will. Um, say, I think that's very important also. May I, Doris? Sure, of course. I think that's important also, but to say, to preserve the landscaping, is it really something that I don't think is going to be realistic in light of their need for play space? So why don't we instead focus on making requests about the border, as you said, Doris? Right. To, right. to, to widen it. To widen the border. Yeah, yeah. Widen it and to ensure that the that the perimeter shrubs are X number of feet in the approximate from the upper grade. And and I actually think the two landscaping issues are not LPC issues, but we should we should include them in our comments anyway. Hey guys, how are we? Are we ready to call the question? To, I, I would say, I, I think from my notes, I have, we support the design that has been presented to us, um, but the signage should not be permanently on the building. The Railway design on the roof should be lower, um, and there should be the landscaping should be addressed to be more consistent with the area. Okay, and Doris, I just want to know Kelly did mention that um, the um, you know as it relates to the landscaping that they are within the landmark site. So they are under LPC review. So I think that's good that we included that. Oh, okay. Modification. Thank, thank you, Kelly. Yes. It's good to have somebody who knows the rules. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So we just need a, uh, that was the motion, Doris? We need a yes. second? I guess I, I don't normally make a motion, but at, uh, and it is, I made the motion, you seconded it? Okay. Okay. And I'm going to put up the poll feature. Do you all see it? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nope. Okay. Little technical difficulties. Um, it it is up now. I don't guess I get to vote. Do no, I? only yes, no, only board yeah. members. Sorry, <laughs> only mm. board members can vote. Um, who are on the committee? <laughs> only committee members. I know there are only committee members. members can vote. Yes. Okay, Doris. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, okay. 
So um, John, our board meeting will take place on Monday um, where the committee recommendation will be um, shared with the full board and um, that recommendation then will be voted upon and you will get a copy as well as the LPC um, sometime next week. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. Thank you all for your attention. Good night all. It's always great to see our committee members. <laughs> okay, now committee members, we need a motion, <laughs> another motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, thank you, Barbara.